Well, this is the wonderful day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice, and we shall be glad in it. We are excited. We are grateful again that the Lord has given us another opportunity to worship him, to celebrate his holy name. I know it's cold outside, but it's warm inside. And so we're thankful that God has given us our spaces, our homes to be our sanctuaries, even during this season of pandemic, that we might worship him, that we might celebrate him, that we are uninhibited in our moments of thanks to God for what he has done. Listen, as we prepare to go further into our time of worship, I want to invite you even now. I want to invite you even now to share this worship experience to begin now. Uh, clicking share on Facebook, sharing this via your uh, YouTube share, sharing our website with others that we might worship the Lord. The Bible teaches us in John where the Lord shares with the woman at the well, there's a day that's coming when you won't worship in Mount Gerizim or even you won't worship at the temple, but you'll be worshiping in spirit and in truth in heart and in form that will reveal those who wonderfully love God and who are associated with the family of faith. And so today, wherever you are, you may not be in this sanctuary at 433 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, but that does not keep you from worshiping and celebrating the Lord. This may have been your mountain, but now God has scattered us to varied places that we might share his gospel even in our homes on today. So I pray that right now you give God great praise for this day and for the time that he's given us and this space for the time that he's given us to lift his name. Come on, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to worship you. So many things have taken place this week, but God, we thank you for still being God and still being seated on the throne. And so, Lord, we can worship you today knowing that you've been kind, you've been good, you've been gracious, you've been compassionate towards us. But, Lord, you've also been our batter, you've been our warrior, you've been one who has fought for us. So, God, we thank you today and we praise you today. So allow our hearts to be open, our minds to be receptive. Lord, allow our voices to lift up the highest of praises that, Lord, you might be glorified through our sacrifice. This is our prayer. These are your people. This is your worship. And we pray that it's pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you right now. Come on, everybody say amen. Praise God and we thank you for this opportunity. Come on, let's celebrate our praise team as they come and take us higher in worship on today. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. If you love him, you ought to put your hands together and open up your mouth and give the Lord praise. If you love him, hallelujah. I've come to give him praise on today. Come on, if you love him, put your hands together with me right here. Come on, church, clap your hands. Come on, come on, come on.
anything. Oh, 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 oh. Father, I love you. Let's sing it one more time. Everybody, lift it up. Say, Lord, I love you. Open up your mouth. 
out and bless the name of our God right there. If you know that he's worthy of the glory, if you know he's worthy of the praise, come on, you ought to bless him right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. I'll be reading the Old and New Testament scriptures on this morning. And the Old Testament scripture will be coming from Joel, the second book of Joel, verses 28 through 32. And it reads, Then after all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servant men and women alike. And I will cause wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will become dark. The moon will turn blood red before the great and terrible day of the Lord arrival. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For some on Mount Zion in Jerusalem will escape, just as the Lord has said. These will be among the survivors whom the Lord has called. New Testament scripture will be coming from 1 John, 2nd chapter, verses 10 through 17. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause another to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go having been blinded by the darkness. I am writing to you who are God's children because you sin, your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I am writing to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I am writing to you who are young in faith because you have won your battles with the evil one. I am writing to you who are God's children because you know the Father. I am writing to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I am writing to you who are young in the faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your hearts and you have won your battle with the evil one. Do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. But when the world, for the world only offers a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions, these are not from the Father, but are from the, this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. God's word is for God's people. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift those hands in the sanctuary, in your home, wherever you are. Come on. And just give the Lord the glory for who he is. The rock of our salvation, the God of creation. Oh, he's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the glory. Nobody else can receive the glory. Nobody else can receive our praise but Jesus. So, Father, we lift our hands. We open up our mouths to acknowledge you and say you deserve it, Lord. You deserve the glory. You deserve our praise. The song says, my hallelujah belongs to
glory, thank you, Jesus, belongs to him. Come on, say my hallelujah. hallelujah. It belongs to you. It's a personal song to the Lord. Say my hallelujah.
church. All to the glory, all to the praise belongs to him. We need to continue to give that to him. Let's go in prayer. Father God, we thank you for just another beautiful day. Father, we thank you for the rain, the sunshine, the ice, the snow, each and every day, Father, we thank you. Because it let us know that we're still in your presence. Father, we thank you for keeping us. Father, you protect us each and every day through unharmed, hurt, and danger. Father, you're with us. We thank you. Father, we thank you for waking up early this morning, finding everything all right. Father, we had food on our table, clothes on our back. Father, you gave us traveling grace each and every day. We thank you for that. Father, you thank you for giving us the light. We thank you for keeping us in the light. Father, we thank you. We love you for all that you have done. Father, each and every day, you give us another opportunity. Father, we had some dark times in our life. Father, we had some, some rough times. We have went through some crossroads in our life, oh, Heavenly Father, but yet you were still there with us. You didn't turn us loose. You, you help us to hold on to some unchanging hands. Father, we thank, thank you for it. Father, we ask that you continue to keep us, lead, and guide us each and every day. Continue to bless each one of us, Father, one by one. Father, we ask that you bless the one that's going through the bereavement. Father, so many have passed along, passed away, Father. They're not with us today. Father, we yes, yes, thank you for, for life. And, and thank you for keeping us, oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you for ordering our step each and every day. And Father, we thank you for it all. We love you. I can't thank you enough. But Father, through it all, when it's all over, Father, your face is the one I wanted to see. Father, we thank you, and thank you for keeping and leading and us. We ask this prayer in your name. Amen. is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme that any man be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath. 
for opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Say, who are you who mumbles in the dark and who are you who draws your veil across the stars? I am the poor white fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery scars. I am the red man driven from the land. I am the immigrant clutching the hope I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog of mighty crush the weak. I am the man who never got ahead. The poorest worker bartered over the years, and yet I'm the one who dreamt our basic dream to build a, to build a land of the free. Who said the free? Not me. The millions on relief today, the millions shot down when we strike, the millions who have nothing for our pay, for all the dreams we've dreamed and all the songs we've sung and all the flags we've held and all the hopes we've held. The millions who have nothing for our pay except the dream that's almost dead today. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never yet has been yet, and yet must be the land where every man is free. Oh yes, I say it plain, America never was America to me, and yet I swear this oath, America will be. Thank you. Come on again, let's celebrate our youth, let's celebrate again. Them taking us down what is our historical lanes of remembering and reflecting upon those whose shoulders we now stand. Thank you, Shelby Calhoun, for again revisiting one Langston Hughes, one Langston Hughes, that poet laureate, Langston Hughes. Well, again, we say good morning to you, to all of our family, to all of our friends. God bless you. Thank you so much for, again, being a part of this morning of Fresh, the HFBC virtual experience. We want you to go ahead and share this moment with someone right now, again, as we celebrate our God for this opportunity in worship on today. Also, for all of our first-time visitors and returning visitors, come on, First Baptist, let's celebrate them in the sanctuary and in the chat room. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please just drop us a note and let us know that you're here. We welcome you and we're so glad that you're a part of our worship experience on today. Listen, if you want more information about this fellowship, you can email us at information at historicfirstbaptistchurch.org or you can call us right now here at the church, 731-422-2751. We'd love to connect with you wherever you are in the world. We're excited about you being able to worship with us on this morning. Listen again, it is a month of history, specifically black history, as we recognize people of color who've made an impact not only locally, not only nationally, but globally. And we thank God for our culture and the content of our people. And we ask that everyone, not just black, but everyone, white, Hispanic, Latino, take time out and again, remember the history and the culture of the African-American people. I ask that you, again, spend a day each day this month or for the rest of this month highlighting someone of color, helping to invest history into your children, into the next generation, especially people of color, helping them to understand uh, their culture, helping them to be proud and of self-esteem, knowing their worth and their value in the world as well as in the kingdom of God. Amen. And so we're excited about, again, this month of heritage. Don't forget, some of you have already given. Some of you are giving even at the moment. Some of you are preparing to give. The fourth Sunday is our HBCU Sunday where we invest and endow uh, institutions of higher learning. This year, the three institutions we will invest in are Tennessee State University, Lane College right here in Jackson, Tennessee, and Lemoyne on College. And so, listen, go ahead and give your gifts when you get the opportunity. Make sure, make sure you place in the memo section HBCU offering. That way, we know where that specific amount goes. It is designated where it has been designated to and designated for. Amen. We don't want to mix it up with tithes and offerings, nor do we want to mix it up with any other gift. Amen. 
Uh, this week, it's cold outside. It's cold outside. They say that there'll be some inclement weather, but our hope is that we may be able to worship on this Ash Wednesday. If not, we will still begin our time of Lent We'll still begin our time of fasting, our time of praying, our time of devotional as a church, our time of coming together to corporately repent and turn and become the better. And so for those of you who are digitally inclined, our calendar and our devotional uh, scriptures and prayers will be on our e-blast. Again, for those of you who are not yet digitally capable, you can call the church and we will get that information to you. But weekly, those devotionals will go out so that we can be praying together, we can be reading together, we can be seeking our God together in this season of Lent as we approach again a fresh Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, which is the first Sunday in April. Amen. And so we're excited about that. For this year, 2021, we're going to be giving ourselves away. Amen. We're going to be giving ourselves away. Every year we do it, but this year more than ever, we're going to give ourselves away. Every year we do our best to try to invest outside of ourselves into our community, into other nonprofits, into those who are in need of help, at least 10% of our budget and God has allowed us to do so and we're continuing to make that commitment the 10 percent of all we gather every year goes back into our local community so I'm asking you to help us continue to be a blessing not only to those who are within the life of the fellowship but also those who are in our local community and so again a part of April uh, part of April 2021 is giving ourselves away. We're having our food giveaway, of course. It'll be April the 24th. That is the Saturday before we celebrate 153 years. But again, beginning on last Saturday, we started receiving donations, non-perishable items, non-perishable goods. And so we invite you to be a part of this, again, food drive so that we can continue to feed those who are hungry, those who are dealing with still yet this pandemic, those who are without jobs, who are in need of food on their tables. I invite you to check the e-blast or call the church for that specific meal plan that we're trying to prepare. We'll take whatever donations we give, but we do have a specific meal plan that we're trying to provide for each family for the duration of feeding them probably three to four to maybe five days, hopefully. So I ask of you, I ask of you to be a blessing to someone else in this season. And so beginning uh, tomorrow, uh, Monday through Thursday, you can uh, begin to give, just drop it off at the front office, as well as on Saturdays, every Saturday until April the 17th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., you can drop off in front of our fellowship hall, any of your donations, we would love for you to be a part of us investing into the rest of this community, amen? Parents, don't forget Children's Church on the fourth Sunday, 1 p.m., our virtual Children's Church. If you have not picked up your packet, you can contact the church for more information. But parents, we do have Children's Church. It is virtual every month on the fourth Sunday right now during this pandemic. We're looking forward to the day where we'll be able to get back together and every Sunday grow and develop our children. But specifically, again, we have packets available for their learning. Last announcement as we prepare to give. If you have the gift of technology, we need your help. We're looking for volunteers again as we continue to expand the ministry of media and sound and technology here at our church as we continue to again attack those platforms of social media so that we can share the gospel in multivaried ways. Again, God has been kind to us under this pandemic, but as we prepare again, hopefully the Lord says the same. Uh, going into the latter part of this year, even into the new year, we want those who are gifted in this area and believe God has called you to serve in this area to begin to prepare yourself. So I'm going to invite you to contact the church and share I'm interested in serving in media, audiovisual, and sound, and I have that gift. 
You can call the church, 731-422-2751, or you can email us at media at historicfirstbaptistchurch.org. Please give your full name, your contact number, your availability for Wednesday and Sunday services, which are 8 a.m. as well as uh, 10 30 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and then going into the do your Thursdays at 12 p.m. All right. So I need you. I need your help. We need your gifting. So if you're gifted in that area, please again email us or contact the church so that we can begin to train you and develop you in your gifting so that God can get glory out of all of us. Amen. Amen. Listen, come on, grab your gifts in your hand. Come on, grab your gifts in your hand. It's time for us to give back in tithe and in offering. Amen. Remember, remember here at First Baptist, we don't give because we have to. We give because we want to. We give because we love God because he first loved us. And we want to invest in that love being extended and shared with the rest of the world. And so we give not grudgingly or under pressure, but we give cheerfully. The Bible says the Lord loves a cheerful giver, which means when you give, you ought to be lovingly laughing and thanking God for being a provider. Amen. And then for those of you who are unable to give at this time due to furlough, due to being laid off, due to this pandemic, businesses being closed. Again, we're not sharing with you, but we're not keeping you from giving, but we're not sharing with you. Our goal is to give so that we can be a blessing to you. You can give in several ways. You can give via our website. You can give via the app Givelify. Just look up the church information, 433 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, and donate responsibly. You can text to give, or you can mail your gifts to the church. Again, we have opportunities for all to participate in the moment of sacrifice. As we prepare to give, we want to again thank God for the gifts that he has provided for us. And then we want to bless God for the opportunities he's going to give us to sow these gifts into others. Just the other day, our men's ministry, again, based on and thankful to those who gave, especially benevolently, we were able to feed those who are within our city who are impacted by homelessness, who are impacted again, impoverished by the circumstances of our present pandemic. And so I thank our men and I thank uh, the area relief ministers for the opportunity to partner with them in making sure that our people, our community have some dignity and some worth and some value and that they are again able to afford just the little things that we take for granted, which is a meal on the table. So come on, let's give, let's give. Lift your devices or your gifts high in the air. And let's thank God for this moment. Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the givers. We thank you for their heart to sow into good ground. Now, Lord, we pray that you allow us as the leadership of this fellowship to be good stewards of every gift that is sown. That, Lord, it is used for the furthering of your kingdom, for the touching of hearts that have been broken and need mending. Lord, we pray that you touch the heart of every giver and even every person that will watch this worship. And Lord, challenge them even in their hearts if they're reluctant to give. Lord, let them see that it's better to give than to receive. So Lord, we pray now that you bless us even in this moment. Bless these gifts that they are sacrificed to you. And we'll be careful to give you praise. All glory indeed belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. And all of God's people said amen. Amen and praise God. Listen, as we prepare to go higher in worship, go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and we'll be back with the word of God.
kindness, for your favor that you've shown towards us, Father. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you honor. We bless your name. We bless your name. So what is it? This morning, our sacrifice of praise. For he is worthy of all the glory, worthy of all the honor. For this we give him thanks, and for this we give him, we give him our praise. Listen, if you have not worshiped already, I don't know what you're waiting on. Again, from the moment we began. God was worthy of our collective and togethered praise. So even now, as we prepare to hear God's heart through the preached word, I pray that you are still lifting your praises up towards the Lord. Philippians chapter 2, I want to begin reading at verse 1. We'll conclude our reading at verse 11. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation we're continuing our series of messages even still. Short prayers for the new year. And this morning from this text, I want to ask the Lord to teach us how to exemplify his attitude. Lord, teach us how to exemplify your attitude. 
Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and one purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude, some translations share mind, that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God our Father. Lord, teach us how to exemplify your attitude. Lord, teach. Again, we share this word's meaning as to impart knowledge or skill in, to give instructions in, to coach, to inform, to enlighten, to discipline, to develop, to give lessons to demonstrate. Lord, teach us how. That word how we've defined over the weeks means or can be defined as according to what? After what precedent? After what means? By what means? By whose help from what source? Lord, teach us how to exemplify this word meaning to show or illustrate by example to serve as an example to display to elucidate to embody to spell out Lord teach us how to exemplify your I love this word it is a possessive pronoun. It is in the possessive case of the word you, and it's used as an attributive ad adjective. Lord, teach us how to exemplify your attitude. That word attitude is defined as the matter, the disposition, the feeling or position with regard to a person or thing, the tendency of orientation, especially the mind one's mental outlook, one's character, one's frame of mind, one's mental state. Lord, teach us how to example your mental state. Noted English architect Sir Christopher Wren was supervising the construction of a magnificent cathedral in London. A journalist thought it would be interesting to interview some of the workers, so he chose three and asked them this question. What are you doing? The first replied, I'm cutting stone for 10 shillings a day. The next answered, 
I'm putting in 10 hours a day on this job. But the third answered and said, I'm helping Sir Christopher Wren construct one of London's greatest cathedrals. Child of God, it's all about your attitude. Beloved, Paul opens chapter 2 by submitting to the Philippian church and all who will read this letter a series of questions for which all its hearers should, after reading them, return a response in the affirmative, seeing that each of them were vested in the already performed work of Christ in each of their lives by way of their acceptance of his salvific work by faith when preached by Paul. And so he begins the interrogation requiring of them with each soul searching question their participation in catechizing their own hearts their own minds in view of the already performed work of Christ which was to be and should have been on display by example in how they interacted with themselves and others question number one is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Yes, the answer to this rhetorical question should be, there is encouragement, support, advocacy, and aid that comes from being in committed relationship to Christ and in the living Christ. Question two, rhetorical. Any comfort from his love, Paul asks? The congregation should have answered in the affirmative, yes, there is comfort, ease, good feeling, great warmth that comes from, that flows out of Christ's love. Love in this particular term meaning unconditional agape for you and for me. Question three. Any fellowship together in the spirit? The answer should have been in the affirmative. Again, yes, there is fellowship. That word fellowship meaning koinonia. There is community, intimacy, joint participation together for the church in the spirit. And question four, are your hearts tender and compassionate? Yes, we have hearts tender. Note this word tender comes from the meaning the bowels were regarded as the seat of the more violent passions such as anger and love, but the Hebrews as the seat of the tender affection, especially kindness, benevolence, hence our hearts. And that word compassionate meant emotions, longings, manifestations of pity and mercy. Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Beloved, after this series of rhetorical questions in verse 1, which were meant to refocus their scattered attentions back on what produces what is true unity in the church since the church at Philippi was having a problem being united, this would give them a clear and sincere and adoring collective center which should have been and which should always be the image of Christ. Paul then, in verse 2, makes a request of this now church in reorientation. He petitions them to make him truly happy. You read the verses. Make my joy complete. As your organizing pastor, as the founding pastor of this church on the second missionary journey, according to Acts chapter 16, make my joy complete, he says. Make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and one purpose church Paul desired for this church and all churches to agree to agree with all of their hearts 
with each other. His desire was for them to find their common unity once again in the central focus of Christ, which in turn would provide the path to their ability to do those things, love one another, work together with one mind and purpose in spite of their own church's diversity. He then, in verse 3, lists a few, verse 3, imperatives that would work against their unity. Listen to it. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. Family, after providing the list of imperatives that were vital to maintaining unity, as Paul says in this letter to the Ephesians, the unity of the faith, he then provides them with what is the hinge, the axis upon which this would be balanced or achieved. Paul says, if you're going to maintain unity in the church and the unity of the church continuing to flourish as the beloved community while at the same time fighting off those enemies that would seek to disrupt the cohesiveness of the family gathering, then you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Family, in this year as we prepare to reset, I'm just trying to get us to focus centrally on the same thing so that we can be successful in the kingdom work that God has called us to. And this is Paul was saying to the church at Philippi, think this in you which Christ sought in him. Paul then gives this hymn illustrative of the mind, the attitude of Christ, and the hand of God, its closing conversation. Listen to it. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to a place, to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's the entirety of the story, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but allow me time to briefly unpack my prayer for this week for us through the lens of this text and we can go about the rest of our days living its application. Church, Paul teaches us that if we're going to exemplify the mind of Christ, the attitude of Christ, we must seek an attitude of unselfishness. You see it, it's in verses 3 a, as well as verse 6. Hear it again, compiled together. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Verse 6. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Lord, teach us to exemplify your attitude as we have an attitude of unselfishness. Unselfishness. Simply meaning not selfish or disinterested. One in generous, one who is generous rather, benevolent, helpful, one who is selfless. Church, Paul submits that their thoughts were to be generous, hear me, towards each other. They were not to be in the business of trying to impress one another or be better than one another but in being supportive of one another. He admonished them against seeking 
personal glory above the care and concern of the community. Paul was submitting to them, don't live this generous life that you have been given in Christ Jesus only looking out for yourself and trying to press, impress others with your achievements. He suggests this as empty glory. He is now illustrative about what he's speaking of in this empty glory, of this empty glory, if you refer back to chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, specifically but not limited to those preaching the gospel, he says, it is true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others, however, do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely intending to make my chains more painful to me. Paul submits that we are to demonstrate the mind of Christ, the attitude of Christ, unselfishly as Christ, who though he was God, did not think of his equality with God as something to cling to. Now that's major, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, our church Jesus, who was and is the Christ and who was and is God hear it now because this is amazing beginning this is the amazing beginning of the benevolent work of God on behalf of his creation in eternity Jesus was in eternity existing within the trinity as part of the Godhead co-equal with the Father and the Holy Spirit but he did not think that it was something to cling to to hold on to or something to be grasped family the text suggests that Jesus, who was God, did not try to grasp for the power of God as seen in Genesis with Adam in the garden as he attempted to rob God of what he had no right to possess, which was wanting to be like God. But Jesus, who was already God and equal to God, was willing to relinquish his position, desiring not to use it for his own advantage. Here, here it is simply. He was willing to surrender his place, performing this selfless act for a creation that had turned selfish. God in Christ Jesus was willing to step down from eternity into his creation for their salvation. Church, I don't, I don't, I don't know who I'm, I'm speaking to this morning, but uh, you've thought it necessary in the scheme of life to build your reputation and wealth on the attitude of get all you can and can all you can get. Believing that this is the only way to the top. But Paul says it differently. He says that a releasing hand to the will of God is always better than a grasping hand at the power of God. If we're going to exemplify the mind of Christ, we have to be unselfish in our attitude. But secondly, it's found in the text, if we're going to exemplify the mind of Christ, the attitude of Christ, we must be willing to seek an attitude that is not only unselfish, but humble. Listen to it. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Now drop down to verse 7. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave, 
and was born as a human being. <sighs> Humble. Let me define this word because many people get it mixed up. Humble, uh, the deepest sense of one's moral littleness. Not proud or arrogant, modest, meek, reserved, unpretentious. Beloved, Paul shares with this church and us that they must be humble, having a sense of humility and thinking of others as better than themselves. Now watch this. History records that before the New Testament era, era rather, the word humility had a negative connotation. The adjective related to it was frequently employed and especially so to describe the mentality of a slave. It conveyed the idea of being base, unfit, shabby, mean, and of no account. So this idea of humility was not something that the Gentiles or Jews would readily seek. But Paul presses this image in view of the life of Christ, the thinking of others as better than themselves. Because what Christ does with the word humility and the word humble is redefines its definition. Family, you hear this in verse 7 when Paul speaks of Jesus instead of holding on to his advantage, his position of right in heaven, he gives up his divine privileges. He gives up his entitled place and empties himself of his position in heaven of royalty and being served into a position of a slave and service to humanity. I know it's messing you up. Uh, just reflect on John chapter 13 when Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Uh, God washes the feet of his creation. He then empties himself again and is born as a human being, limiting his position to one geographical location at a time. Church Jesus, who is the son of God, the second person in the Trinity, empties himself for the sake of his creation. His attitude was unselfish and humble, not proud or arrogant, but reserved and submissive for the sake of the kingdom. And church, again, I don't know who this is specifically for, but you've been walking around with, uh, um, with just, you, you've been walking around just full of yourself uh, while others are in need of you divesting of yourself so that they might be able to be invested in by you. You've been living for you so long that there are many who are starving for what God has desired to do through you now that he has transformed you for his work. Child of God, uh, can I just suggest to you, uh, humble yourself. Uh, humble yourself so that God can use you and so that others might be filled by you. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. The attitude that we ought to exemplify is unselfish. Uh, it also should be humble. But family, the attitude that we are to exemplify, if we're going to exemplify, uh, we must be willing to seek also an attitude of sacrifice. Listen to verse 4. Again, uh, and then I'll drop down to 7C and verse 8. It says, don't look out for your own interests, but take an interest in others. Look at, look at the scripture. Look at, look, at, look at the end of the verse 7 and 8. Uh, they're about to put it on the screen. Uh, when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. I need y'all to hear that. I need y'all to hear that. I need y'all to hear that. Let me read it one more time. Let me read it one more time. When he appeared 
in human form, when he appeared in human form, when he appeared in human form, I need y'all to hear that, when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death. Come on. Come on. Come on. We have to have an attitude of sacrifice. That word sacrifice can be defined as the word meaning to surrender or give up or permit injury or disadvantage to for the sake of something or someone else to forfeit, to offer up, to part with. Beloved, Paul takes one last glance at the life of Jesus when he makes this imperative. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others. Richard R. Melick Jr. in his commentary uh, uh, writes these words on these specific verses or this specific verse. He says, uh, a way of unity then is watching to see how God works in others, the qualities he desires in everyone. The focus shifts to others rather than personal spiritual qualities. The interpretation he shares is attractive. He says it answers the problem of self-centeredness and false glory. It also does not relieve Christians of an obligation to care for their own things. Paul was literally in a broader scope sharing that the concerns of one were to become the concerns of all. Paul, by making this statement, is not saying that you ought not to look out for yourself. Paul is saying that you can take care of yourself, but yet you ought to still be looking out for the greater interest of others. Family, we cannot fully exemplify the attitude, the mind of Christ, if we are unwilling to look out for those in the fellowship, those who are in the family, even when we are called upon to raise their needs above our own present needs. Paul lifts this verse, or in verse 7, concluding with verse 8 in its entirety. He is not telling us not to look out for ourselves, but that there will be times when you need and are not as in great a need as another, and you're to put them before you. Church, watch this. Uh, when Christ appeared in human form, he surrendered himself in obedience to God the Father and the will of the Father to appease, listen to this, the Father's wrath, though his personal, through his path, the personal sacrifice on the cross, dying the death of a criminal when he was not guilty of no human crime and had committed no sin towards God. Listen, Jesus looked after our interests. Okay, y'all miss it. I'm trying to share with you that you need to have the attitude of Christ. Okay, uh, uh, Jesus, who was God and is God, surrendered himself in obedience to the will of the Father in eternity to please and appease the Father's wrath in humanity through his personal sacrifice on the cross dying the death of a criminal when he was not guilty of any human crime and had committed no sin against God. Jesus looked after our interests. Somebody ought to be shouting just what, right where you are. Here, here's, here, here's why. Uh, I don't care how many times it is said Every time it's said, you ought to shout like you're hearing it for the first time. Let me say it one more time. Uh, Jesus died in your place. I'm just waiting on you. I'm just, I, I got a few more minutes. Uh, Jesus died in your place. Okay, let me tell you what, what he did. Here it is. Uh, he looked after our interests both physically and eternally, and he didn't have to. He was unselfish, humble, and sacrificial because he loved us. A chaplain, a chaplain was speaking 
uh, to a soldier uh, on a cot um, in a hospital. Uh, here's what he said. You have lost an arm in the great cause. Uh, the soldier smiles and says, uh, no, uh, I didn't lose it. I gave it. All right. All right. All right. Uh, uh, uh. Family, in the same way Jesus did not lose his life, he gave his life purposefully for the interests of you and me. That's why the Bible teaches us that no man takes my life, Jesus says, I'm laying it down because I love you. Church, we have been called upon to show this type of grace, to example this type of grace, to live this type of grace that has graced us in the life of this community of faith and to do so abroad, endeavoring always to keep the unity of the faith. Child of God, we should wake up serving our Savior looking for those for which we have been tasked to surrender our lives for, desiring in our surrender to see their success. Family, sometimes uh, it will be for us, watch this, hear me, to take what we do not deserve for the success of those we might think are undeserving. Okay, you think I'm making this up? I'm still in the text. Uh, I just told you that that's what Christ did for us. Uh, we family have, have to be willing to have a sacrificial attitude for those who are deserving and even those who are undeserving. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, while we were undeserving, which means that our faith does not look just to help those that look like us. Our faith looks for those who even are not yet like us, desiring that through our sacrifice of attitude that one day we shall all be the same. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But let me share one more thing. I need the helpers. And, and I got help in my office. I wasn't going to do this. I, here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The text says, the text says, the Bible says, I, I'm, it's right here, it's in the Bible. Here it is, right here. Uh, the text says, when you have the same attitude as Christ, when you have the mind of Christ, when you think this in you, which Christ thought in him, God will elevate you. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, let's read the verses. Uh, verse 9 through 11. Let's just read it. Let's just read it. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Christ Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father let's read again you might have missed it verse 9 therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. I'm done. I don't see y'all shouting out there. Uh, uh, virtually, I don't see you clapping your hands. I don't see you with the little dance emoji. I don't see you with the, I, 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 don't, I don't see, I don't know why you're not shouting. I told you, uh, here's what you got to understand. Your submissiveness, your surrender to the work and the will of God as Christ did in his own heart and mind towards the will of God when he unselfishly gave of himself, humbled himself when he didn't have to, sacrificially died when he did not have to God honor that with elevation come here I'm talking to you because you think being unselfish and being humble and being sacrificial is being ran over 
but I'm trying to tell you that when you're unselfish and you're humble and you're sacrificial and you surrender under the will of God and the hand of God and the work of God, God has a way of lifting you up. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to wrap this up, church. As a result of the attitude, the mindset that Jesus chose to exhibit, God elevated him, watch this, to the place of highest honor. Church, God exalted Jesus. It literally means that Jesus was super exalted. Y'all Y'all miss your shout. Uh, uh. Jesus is given by God a place that now no other spirit or person can take him from because they did not lift him to. Yeah, okay, all right. Let me see if I can continue to unpack this. Our family, God elevated him, and along with his elevation, watch this, gave him the name which is above all other names, which suggests, family, that there is no other equal to the son in name, which means if there's no equal to him in name, there's no equal to him in nature. It will be at his name, watch this, that every knee shall bow. In heaven, in earth, and under the earth, which means you cannot escape his reign, his rule, his sovereignty. And every tongue will declare that Jesus Christ, the one who saves the Messiah, is Lord and ruler of all. He says this will be done to the glory of God. Family, Jesus never once had to elevate himself. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. Uh, he never once flexed his authority outside of the borders given him for his mission. He chose, watch this, this blessed my spirit, to be weak when he could have chosen to be strong. He chose to weep and shed tears when he was the one who wiped tears. He chose to give way to a broken humanity so that they might be healed and once again reconciled. And because of this attitude, God elevated him to a place that no one but him could remove. Again, as I wrap up, I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I, I really don't. I, I, I'm just. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. The Lord dropped this. Dropped this in my heart as I was sitting in my room. But but you've been trying to elevate yourself. You spent your whole life trying to elevate yourself you 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 you've lived your life trying to be on somebody's list because you were told you needed to be in all the right circles to succeed you spent your life trying to sit at someone else's table who really don't want you there because you think to be seen at the table is to be celebrated I'm talking to that person who's kissed somebody else's ring. Embarrass themselves for what they think is success. You're dating for power. You're marrying for money or position only to live miserable lives you are never meant to be in. So can I pause this morning and tell you that God does the elevating. I need to say that for somebody one more time. God does the elevating. You don't need to kiss anybody's anything to succeed or to be elevated. All you need to do is to let his mind be your mind. And God will do the rest. And I tell someone that he knows where you are. He knows when it's time. I'm going 
a living witness that if you surrender your mind to him, he will exalt you in due season or seasons. Yo, don't, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Because just because he's elevated you once doesn't mean he's through if he's invested more in you. And can I tell somebody, family, uh, high positions, high positions, just hear me, just hear me, high positions are most often reserved for those who have served well in low places. You want to know why God has not given you elevation? Look at your service in the low place. Were you always complaining, murmuring, cursing God, pointing your little bony finger up? Or did you surrender and serve knowing that sometimes you have to go through mess in order to receive majesty? Can I tell someone that when you learn how to live and serve in your low place, God can and will elevate you to that high place he has already invested in you. Beloved, Jesus unselfishly, I told you, humbly and sacrificially lived in the valley, served in the valley, died in the valley, and then was raised from the depths of the valley and placed in the highest place above the valley. Lord, teach us how to exemplify. Teach us how to exemplify your attitude. Teach us how to have your I'm done. Les and Leslie Parrott write in Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts. Seven questions to be asked before and after you marry. Here's what they write. They shared that while they were taking a flight in a small plane in Washington State, as marriage counselors, uh, Les and Leslie were given some interesting information from their pilot. I need y'all to hear this. Um, the pilot says, we crossed over the islands of Puget Sound and approached the lights of a local airport. And he said, the most important things about landing is the attitude of the plane. Y'all missed it, okay. The pilot says that the most important thing about landing is the attitude of the plane. Les and Leslie thought like you and me. They said, no, you mean altitude of the plane. Uh, the pilot said, no, I meant what I said. The attitude of the plane. He said, you see, the attitude has to do with the nose of the plane. He said, if the plane is too high, if its nose is too high, if its attitude is too high, the plane will come down with a severe bounce. And if the attitude, the nose of the plane is too low, the plane may go out of control because of excessive landing speed. The pilot then says something that grasps their attention and changes their thought process. He says, the trick is to get the right attitude in spite of the atmospheric conditions. Y'all missed this shout. Y'all missed this shout. Uh, child of God, uh, it's, it, it, if you get the right attitude despite the atmospheric conditions, you can always land well, even in turbulence. Uh, listen, listen, uh, listen. I, I, I'm trying to push somebody to understand that the trick is to develop the right attitude in spite of the circumstances we find ourselves in. Yes, we're in the midst of a pandemic, but if you got the right attitude, if you have the right mindset, then you can land on the other side of the pandemic. I, I, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Uh, I know we're in the midst of a social unrest that is unprecedented and still unpredictable. But if you get your mind right, if you get your attitude right, if it's not too high or too low, if it's just right, then God can land us on the other side of this social unrest, 
closer than we were before. I know I'm talking to somebody. Hold it. I, I know who I'm talking to. I, I know uh, you can get your relationship right if you get your attitude right. Somebody's attitude is too high and you're bouncing all over the place. Somebody's attitude is too low and you're about to have a crash landing but I'm trying to tell you steady your nose and when you steady your nose God can get glory out of your situation yeah I'm, I'm, listen I'm done but my soul done got happy Paul says let this man being you that was also in Christ Jesus. And I just wonder this morning, is there anybody that wants a right mind? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need you to change your mind. And changing your mind comes with lowering and lifting your altitude and centering your focus on Christ. That's why I say on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the crowd is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. Come here, on Christ, yes! I know it, I know it, I know it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, somebody said, somebody said, Pastor, Pastor, you're getting too happy. I understand, I understand. This ain't your shout. This mine. This ain't your shout, this mine. Because I realized and I confessed that there were moments when I had the wrong attitude. And now that I look back on my bad attitude and look now at how God still kept me in my arrogance, in my ignorance, in my selfish, unwilling to sacrifice because I didn't want somebody to get more than I had. But now I know that if I want more, I gotta give more. Yay! Yeah! I know it. I know it. I, it's okay. It's okay. This ain't for everybody. This, this, just, this just my shout. You can holler like you want to. You can wave your hands. You ain't even got to wave your hands. You can rock. You can cry. I just feel like hollering. Yeah! Yes! Yeah! trying to quit but he's able to elevate you if you don't mind being in the low places God is willing and he's ready to elevate you I wonder is there anybody in here that can just shout with me Elevate me, God. Elevate me. I'm changing my attitude right now. Elevate me, God. I'm changing the way I think. Elevate me, God. 
elevate me God I don't mind surrendering my life hey! 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 elevate me God This mind being you that was also in Christ Jesus. Lord, teach us how to exemplify your, your attitude. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Let me, let me pray for you as we prepare to extend the invitation of Christ to you. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity you give us again to share your heart and your hope with others. We pray. I know somebody in this space this morning is ready to change their attitude. To let the mind of Christ be their mind to become unselfish, to be humble, to be sacrificial. Not so we can elevate, but because it is our responsibility to be surrendered in this moment. And Lord, however you choose to elevate, we'll be thankful. Lord, sometimes it's difficult to see your hand and heart at work. But for those in this moment who are wrestling with a relationship, a fellowship, and even appreciation, we pray for them right now. That they're able to know that they have a friend in you. So Lord, for that soul that's not saved, we pray their salvation. For that soul that's saved, we pray their reconnection. And for that heart that is broken, we pray it's mending. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and praise God. Listen, if you are not saved, you need to be saved. If you're saved, you need to belong somewhere. And if you need a prayer, we're here to pray with and pray for you. We offer Christ to you the door to our Father's house is open. All you have to do right now is again email us or call us here at the church. The information is on the screen. You can call us at 731-422-2751. There's somebody waiting to receive your call to extend the invitation of Christ to you to receive you back into the fold of family if you're desiring to rededicate, even to pray with you. If you desire not to call, you can email us for prayer at prayer at historicfirstbaptistchurch.org. If you want to join the fellowship, become a believer in Christ as well as either rededicate your life or just re reassess where you are and say, Lord, just here I am. You can email us at newmembers at historicfirstbaptistchurch.org and we would be happy to have you as a part of our family. No matter where you are in the world, we'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. I want your glow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Less of me yeah, yeah. and more of you. Yeah, yeah. Is what I need. Come on. 
Show me your glory. Come on. Come on. And show me your power. Oh, less of me and more yeah. of you is what I need. I, I need your glory. Listen, he's available. He desires to be close to you. And we pray that you've made the decision to be close to him. Thank you for letting us be your family. Thank you for letting us walk through this significant moment in your life. Thank you for letting us partner in prayer with you on today. Lord, teach us how to exemplify your attitude, how to be an example of your attitude, how to demonstrate and display your attitude as we leave this moment of worship and spend time with our families as we leave this moment of worship to go out into the broader community safely. Lord, teach us through every encounter, through every moment. And don't let us cower away from it. Don't let us shy away from it. Don't let us be closed mouth about it. Lord, let us be unselfish in our acts, humble in our nation, sacrificial in our giving so that someone might be blessed. And then, Lord, if you choose to elevate us, which you said you would, we'll be grateful and thankful for what you allow to happen. Listen, as we get ready to leave this place, just a few things. Number one, don't forget First Baptist, all who are watching as moderator of the Browns Creek District Association this Saturday is going to be our first quarterly session of the year. Look on the website, www.brownscreekdistrict.org, and you can see the Zoom links to the various department meetings that will take place. If you're a young adult, specifically between the ages of 18 and 35, there's a Zoom link. I'll be teaching that class. We have classes for our men, classes for women. We have classes also available for our hospitality ministries. We are a district that tools and equips churches for the work of ministry. There are classes for children and youth specifically designed for them, equipping them and nurturing them in the word of God, helping them, shaping them to have the right attitude. That's this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10.30, 9 a.m. to 9.45 our Zoom classes. And then from 9.50 to 10.30, is our worship opportunity. So we're excited about this first quarterly session of our district association as we prepare this new year to equip churches in the work of ministry. I also want to continue to lift up in prayer families in the life of our church. We want to continue to lift the Meriwether family. We also want to continue to lift the Marcel family, Sister Mary and Marcel, who lost two loved ones uh, just recently. We also want to lift one of our deacons, uh, and his brother who are members of this church, Deacon Mark Reed and Mike Reed, uh, then the loss of their father. Uh, his services will be this week. We also want to lift up in prayer one of our uh, team members, teammates, musicians here at the church, directors, Stedman Roebuck in the loss of his mother. Uh, she was a part of this family. She was uh, if I'm not mistaken, she was the niece to Brother Yarbrough, and she was also the cousin to Mark and Brian Yarbrough, Mark Suggs and Brian Yarbrough. And so we want to lift uh, those families in our prayers. Her services are to come this week as well. Uh, everyone knows Miss Cynthia, her golden voice. She sang here on multiple occasions. And everybody knows Stedman. We love him. He's a son of this fellowship. He's always a part. His father used to play for this fellowship years ago. So we want to lift these families in our prayers and continue to ask God's blessings and covering on them. There are others that we lift in prayer even now. Those who've lost loved ones this year, still grieving. Those who lost loved ones last year, still grieving. Not having that opportunity to make closure, still trying to find it, we're praying for them. We're praying for those families who are fighting right now with family members who are sick and battling COVID and other diseases. We're praying for their strength right now. Again, we know COVID is the word of the day, but there's still people passing away from cancer, still people 
battling heart conditions, still people, again, having medical disruptions, and we need to pray for our, our hospitals, our doctors, our nurses, who are still on the front lines fighting this pandemic. Even if our minds have shifted, they're still in the trenches, and we need to lift them in our prayers. We need to make sure they know that they are supported and they are loved through our ways, through our prayers, and through kind gestures when we get the opportunity. And family, I say this again, let us pray for our country. Let us pray for our country. Again, all that you've seen this past week, all that has gone on, we need to still pray for our country. We need to pray for its indifference with itself. We need to pray for its unwillingness to adjust its own personal attitude. We need to pray for its unwillingness to know that everybody matters, that we should think of others more than we think of ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been called as believers to example his mind. Let's do that this week, and let's do it on purpose. Now look this way and let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift the countenance of his presence upon you and give you his peace and your laughter and your leisure and your frustration and even in your tears. Until we shall all one day sit at the feet of Jesus where there is no sunrise or sunset. Listen, family, God bless you. I love you. Weather permitting, we'll see you on Wednesday. Weather permitting, we'll see you on next Sunday. I love you with the love of Christ. Be encouraged. <laughs>